The problem with you is you're whining like a little fucking baby. What's going on, fam? It's your boy, Papa Swolio, back with another episode of Ask Papa Swolio. Remember, if you want your question featured right here on the show, just drop it in the comments down below with the hashtag Ask Papa Swolio, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Remember to subscribe also to the Daily Swole podcast channel. It's right here on YouTube, and I go live every single day. And you can also subscribe to the audio cast where I bang your ear holes on Apple, on Google, on freaking Spotify. Spotify everywhere. I'll put it in the cards in the description down below. So I'll see you on the podcast. Let's get into the first question. And this one is from Bagel Gang. And he asks, Papa Swolio, you say to be consistent and to put in the work even if you don't feel like it. You also stress not to overtraining and the importance of rest. How do I balance resting and training to maximize results? With the application of doing it, your experience, you say here you're also an ex-rower if that gives you context, and it does because usually people that do hardcore cardiovascular training really just do cardio all the time, even on recovery days, like recovery rowing and shit like that. You know, your body is going to adapt to whatever stress you put it under. If you're doing tons of activity and you're used to doing a lot of cardio, even on days where you're recovering, your body is going to adapt to that. So it's not so much overtraining as it is under recovering. So if you're recovering enough and you're doing your yoga, you're doing foam rolling, you're getting enough sleep, you're eating properly, you might be recovering more than the average person. You could also do blood work and make sure all your markers are correct and in the right range and you know the normal things you would do to monitor health you have to figure out what's your best balance sometimes for me when I'm sore certain areas I know I'm gonna go and crush a different body part sometimes when I'm sore I'm like I'm not that sore but mentally like today I actually went to the gym to crush an arm workout got there looked around I'm like I don't want to fucking lift so I just did 20 minutes on the step mill, did some calves, and I left. It just wasn't my day, I'll crush it tomorrow. So your amount of recovery is gonna have to come from experience as the best way to customize it. And if you're recovering enough, you can push yourself. Question from Melissa Key. Papa Suolio, is it normal to be hungrier after a heavy leg day? This happens to me every single week and I think it's normal, or do I need to consume more on the leg day rather than the day after? Love the show. Well, thank you, Melissa. And is it normal? Every Everyone's going to be different. I mean, some people like to eat breakfast. Some people like to do intermittent fasting. So that is going to be completely up to the individual. Your caloric intake, depending on what your goal is, it's not going to be literally what you eat on Monday and what you eat on Tuesday and what you eat on Wednesday. I mean, if you have 500 calories on Monday, but then you eat 6,000 calories on Tuesday and then 1,500 on Wednesday, you're going to lose that consistency psychologically and physically. But it's more about what your rolling caloric intake is. That's why when people discuss uh, caloric surplus and deficit, it, they say, oh, you know, you lose about a pound or two a week, you want to cut 500 to 1,000 calories. Because over the course of that week, that deficit will generally lead towards about a pound or two of fat loss over the course of the week. You're not making all these dramatic changes day to day. So as long as you are getting your overall caloric intake on a general daily, like maybe two, three day weekly schedule, you're going to be making either gains or losses depending on your caloric surplus or your caloric deficit. Question from Hakeem Iverson. Papa Swolio, do you need to target glute medius directly? That's a good question and I have a couple of questions about your question. Hakeem, do you need to target the glute medius period? Target it, you mean isolate it and everyone should be working every muscle in their body. And if you want to target it directly, you want to do movements generally in the frontal plane, which means you're moving side to side. Lateral tube walking is great. Doing single leg squats and single leg exercises force the body to create that lateral stability. So that would be where I would recommend starting a couple of those exercises are on my blog, on my website, swolnormousx.com. So you can check out the links in the main menu on swolnormousx.com. But the glute medius is a very important muscle for that frontal plane stability, which helps keep the thighs, the femur bone, actually stabilized and in proper alignment in the hip joint, which translates down to the knee. So if you have chronic ankle or plantar fasciitis and issues with that, or any other kind of knee problems or chronic back pain, it could be because the glute medius is not activating properly, and that's a reason why you should be activating it. Question from Kaz J. Papa Swolio, my question is, how strong are you? Like your max high bar, ass to grass squat, pause, bench, overhead press, deadlift, pull-ups, Etc. Pretty interested in this because I want to compare your physique to how strong you are to see what strength is good for a good physique. Well, 
You gotta stop comparing shit like this. You gotta, it doesn't fucking matter how strong I am. I don't know the answers to these questions anyway, but the question itself is not the right approach for you. You wanna know what strength is good enough for good physique. That depends on how your training style is. How tall are you? If you're a six foot five giant, you probably should have the ability to lift more as you are a bigger person, as you're able to carry more muscle mass. You're gonna look differently if you're taller. A lot of you probably know this. If you and your friend both weigh 200 pounds and you're 5'8 and your friend is 6'3, you're gonna look bulky and he's gonna look slender and lean just with the same amount of weight just because it's distributed over a bigger size. So my max high bar ass to grass squat, I don't like squatting high bar anymore. I don't know what my max is because I don't do max reps. Paused bench, I never do paused bench. Why? Because I don't give a fuck about a paused bench. My overhead press, I don't like to stress my anterior deltoid all the time. I do overhead pressing, specifically more moderate high repetitions, but I don't max out on it. My deadlift, I don't max deadlift anymore, but I've done over 500 pounds in the past and then I stopped trying to increase it. Uh, pull-ups, I do wide grip pull-ups. I don't max out on pull-ups or do max sets all the time or know what my max capacity is. You shouldn't be interested in this at all. You should be interested in what you're doing. You want to get a good physique? Then just keep on getting stronger, keep on lifting hard for you, and and then when you are at a good physique, guess what? You're gonna know how strong you should be. And that's how you should be thinking about this. Stop comparing shit. It's all about you. It's all about what you need to do for you. What's your max high bar ass to grass squat? Where are you with your caloric intake, with your nutrition, with your training, with your sleep, with your yoga, with your meditation? What is your current situation? That's what you should be paying attention to. Question from James Cartwright. Papa Swolio, how can I prevent knee pain? I see it happening to guys in their 40s and it's not something I ever want to go through. I don't have anything at the moment, but I'm worried I might have something like that later down the line. You can focus on doing glute isolation activities and also practice yoga and foam rolling, AKA myofascial release. If you are keeping your body mobile, if you're activating the stabilizer muscles as done in yoga and maybe with like single leg training and unilateral training, that's what you should be focusing on, okay? Mobility is everything. And when people lose that mobility, their muscles aren't able to work the way that they're supposed to. Things like wearing sneakers, elevating your heels, throws off your back and your knees. People that wear high heels a lot, like women, are at very high risk for ACL injuries because they have wider hips, they have poor stability in their hips as well because they're sitting down a lot, they're elevating their heels so they have an anterior pelvic tilt, their knees are generally caving in a little bit more. So footwear, sedentary lifestyle. These are all things that really fuck up people's mobility and can really put a lot of pressure on the knees. Question from Skilled Robin. Papa Swolio, my mom just recently went through gastric sleeve surgery and she wants to work out, but is currently pretty big still and losing weight. She wants me to help her out, but what should I do to help her? What type of split? Is she practicing yoga? Yoga is for all levels. Have her start doing some beginner classes online or going to a local studio. She needs to learn how to move her body. And everyone wants to get in the gym and start lifting weights, and I think that's great, and I encourage everyone to lift weights. You know that here on this fucking channel. Talk about lifting weights all the time. It's important. Everyone should do it, but everyone should also be doing yoga. And mobility, those stabilizer muscles, learning how to control yourself, getting up off the floor, moving, holding isometric poses, moving your hips better. You know, she's very overweight. She wasn't very active, so she needs to get her body primed before you start moving into weights. So she needs to do yoga anyway, in addition to weights, but I would recommend doing yoga first and that's gonna be very guided and walk her through things, which is going to be excellent for her. So she's gonna learn a lot about her body, build a lot of strength and endurance and progress to weight training when she helps her lose more weight. Question from Christy Mayberry. Papa Suolio, this week was the fourth week of my current workout program and I increased the sets of each exercise from three to four and I stayed within the 10 to 15 repetition range. But I found I needed to decrease the weights a little bit to complete all the sets to failure within that range. Is decreasing the weight okay as long as the sets increased? Great question. Hypertrophy is within a rep range generally of six to 12 repetitions. So if you're increasing the volume, you want to decrease the intensity. Meaning since you're doing more repetitions and more overall sets, you wanna decrease the intensity. You don't wanna do a ton of like hardcore, super heavy weight, you know, super overloaded exercises as you're increasing the overall workload. So if you're doing 20 sets versus five sets, you don't wanna do 20 sets of a single rep max. Once you start 
upping the intensity, increasing the weight, decreasing the repetitions, you want to offset that with how hard you're working during those sets. You don't necessarily have to do four sets to absolute failure. Your effort, meaning that intensity, your effort during those sets is going to be the determining factor whether or not you should be increasing your overall volume or decreasing it. When you add a set, let's say you go from three sets to four sets, you wanna back off the intensity a little bit. You don't wanna work quite as hard, meaning you're gonna to want to generally drop the weight and do more repetitions. That way the overload isn't as much because you're working on more overall sets. So if you're going from three sets to five, which is a big jump overall every single exercise, you wanna make sure you back it off a little bit to allow for that increase in volume and then over the next couple of weeks, for example, Example, then you increase the weight with those more sets and then you can kind of do that again and repeat maybe add another exercise with three sets and then everything else drops back to three sets because now you're doing four different exercises total instead of three different exercises so that's how it's gonna work so you want to adjust your intensity your effort based on if you're adding more overall like sets to your routine question from fight the fat Papa Swolio, can you give me your opinion on saunas and fasting? Mostly how often and how long to do both. Your choice. If you want to do intermittent fasting, that's fine. I don't talk or discuss or promote like fast for two days, for three days. I leave that up to you. I'm not going to promote that and sit here and tell you to do that because for a lot of people that could be unhealthy, even though it could be very healthy, it depends on a lot of other factors that I'm not just going to sit here and spout, hey, you should be fasting. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell people not to eat, but you can play around with that and see what works best for you. It's generally not dangerous if you're in good health. And in terms of saunas, I do 30 minutes and I try to go every single day. So six to seven days a week, I'm in a sauna and I usually don't eat that many meals. I usually load my food later on the day, maybe one or two meals in the evening. Question from JFK21. Papa Swolio, if you're overweight and eating in a deficit to lose fat, is it a waste of time to lift as heavy as you can? No. It's not a waste of time at all. You should be doing strength training. I don't know what you mean by lifting as heavy as you can, like one rep maxes, that's not really important. But I would recommend keeping it in a hypertrophy rep range, anywhere between eight to 15 repetitions on all your sets. That's a great framework. And push yourself. There's nothing wrong with pushing yourself because your body is going to, you know, based on your experience, you don't want to just jump in the deep end of the pool and just start smashing yourself. As you, you know, keep on losing weight and you learn more about your body and you see how you you're recovering. If you're recovering enough, you can continue pushing it. But just remember, your goal is weight loss. Your goal is developing lean tissue. Your goal is not to gain strength. You're not going to be gaining strength in a caloric deficit. Your goal is to lose weight, but to train and break down your lean tissue so you're causing your body to need to regenerate tissue and use energy and use calories, whether it's stored in your body and what you're consuming. But of course, if you're not consuming enough for maintenance with your additional exercise expenditure, your body is going to have to take fat from somewhere. Where is it gonna find the fat? Your body, and it's gonna help you lose that extra body fat while still maintaining and developing lean muscle mass. Not saying you're growing a ton or gaining a ton of muscle mass, but you're developing it. You're breaking it down, rebuilding it, getting stronger, getting you know harder, denser, all those types of things. So it's practice and just constant exposure to those variables. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Ask Papa Swolio. Remember, if you wanna be featured right here on the show, just drop your question in the comments down below with the hashtag Ask Papa Swolio, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And before you leave, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like it. If you haven't liked the video yet, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you come back here for daily videos and also check out the Daily Swole podcast available everywhere. Links in the cards in the description down below and also my second channel, Daily Swole Podcast, for the live stream there every single day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out. Click the link, motherfucker. Click the link, click the link, watch another video, like and subscribe. I know you want to, you know you want to. Come on, everyone knows you want to. You love Papa Swolio, you love the man bun, you love the sick fucking gains. You love it, oh, 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 you love it, oh, 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 oh.